Ascension stories. And I feel like we're in the middle of both of them, all right? So the one I just read to you was very happy, right? Jesus blesses the disciple, goes up into the holy, and they start worshiping and blessing Jesus and visiting the temple every day to bless God. This sense of joy, right? This sense that things are good now, that everything is whole now. And I don't know about you, but I had those moments this week, right? For a moment, when I heard that report that said we could take off our masks if we were vaccinated, a bubble of joy, right? When I was digging in, when you go to put mulch, and planting some new flowers over at the parsonage, a bubble of joy. But the second time Luke tells the story, the second version, is my next reaction, right? So I had a bubble of joy when I was like, oh great, we get to take off our masks. And then I was like, but what does that mean for church? What does that mean for when I'm in a group of people who I don't know if they're vaccinated or not vaccinated? When I'm with people who are too little to be vaccinated, what does it mean? And so my feelings about that were different. About what do I do then? Because as pastors, you should know that Facebook has been blowing up. And Twitter has been blowing up since Thursday about how do we care for everyone in our community? Everyone. How do we do that? And I don't have an answer yet, and the council doesn't meet until after church next week. So we won't have an answer for a while. But it reminded me of the second version of Luke's story of Ascension, which happens in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Because there's a different feel to that version of the story. He tells the same story twice and makes it completely different. In that version of the story, when they came together for the last time, the disciples asked Jesus, when will the kingdom be here? Of course, they haven't listened to a word he said in the entire rest of the gospel, right? When he's told them they are building the kingdom every time they love their neighbor, every time they bring healing and wholeness to the community, every time they work to change the lives and people around them, that they're building the kingdom. So they asked him, when is the kingdom coming? And he says to them, y'all don't know. You aren't going to know when the kingdom is coming. But what I want you to do, I want you to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the world, and I want you to share the good news. I want you to share the story of love. And at that point, Jesus is lifted up and taken into the hole. And there, doing what all of you would be doing, right? Okay, so they're looking up. And two angels appear beside them and say, why are you looking up towards the heavens? Why are you looking up towards the heavens? So they return to Jerusalem, right? Same thing happened in the last story. In the last story, return to Jerusalem, start going to the temple and blessing God. So showing overt signs of joy and happiness. 
In this story, they're in Jerusalem. They head to the upper room. And it says they gather. They gather there to choose who will replace the disciples who've been lost. So particularly Judas, they're going to replace him with Matthias. And it says, they started praying. They started praying with the women, particularly Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brother. They started praying. Two different outcomes to the same event, right? Happiness, blessing, worship. A little bit of fear, right? Like they're back in that upper room where they went to hide after Jesus was executed by the state. They're there in that upper room. They gather together again and they're praying. They're choosing their new leadership. They're replacing what didn't work and finding something new. And they're praying, waiting for the Spirit to come. I think that's the place we're living right now, right? These moments where we have this great joy, that sense in that, that, that psalm I read of singing and clapping and hope, because now we can hug our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, that we can meet with them and know that we will be okay. We could still catch COVID, but we're not going to die from it. And yet still fearful. Still wondering what it means to live in a world where more than 30% of us refuse to get vaccinated. Some of which can't get vaccinated because they're not old enough. How do we live in that world of joy and singing praise? And yet still worry and fear and concern? And I wish I could say I have the answer. What I have is that Luke tells us both and exist. They both happen, and they both happened at the same time in the same way. He shares with us that it is okay to move on at the point at which there was a horrific act that changed your life and being. It's okay to move on. And it's okay to also be worried, to turn to God and pray when you don't know what to do in those moments, to turn to God and ask for help in finding the people who can be the leadership you need at that moment, to turn to God and ask the Spirit to come into your presence in your life and to wait for that to happen. It's okay to have both, to have joy and fear. To live in the moment where there are times where you celebrate and sing praise and there are times when you're on your knees weeping and praying. Don't you wish faith was easy? That I could tell you it's all okay and that God will fix it. But in this story, even the angels tell us, why are you looking up there? Look around you. Look here where you are. Look at the need that is in front of you. Build the kingdom that is there. Invite the Spirit to dwell within you. Joy. And prayer. Blessing. And fear. Part of our role right now is to live in that in-between. To live and celebrate those moments of hope. And to know that it's okay when we're stuck in the moments of change. Amen.